Hello, everyone. I'm Ryan from Fireside Knicks with my friends and co-host Dylan Justin Backer. And in this episode, we're talking about whether the Knicks should go out and get Joel Embiid and then kind of talking about what we think it would take to get a player of his caliber. Now, there's obviously a lot that goes into Joel Embiid as a player. You know, he's coming off of a knee injury in the postseason. So that's always at least somewhat of a concern, something to at least monitor. But we know when he's on the court and when he's playing, I mean, this is one of the greatest offensive threats to the center position we've seen in a very long time. He's dominant. He goes out. He drops 30 plus points a game. I think he had the scoring title this year. Um, he all he does is go out, go, goes out and scores. He's an excellent defensive player. He's a defensive player of the year candidate year in and year out. Um, this is a guy who would immediately be that like number one option that the Knicks have been looking for. And if James Harden does inevitably leave Philadelphia, which even if it doesn't come this year, it feels like it's a matter of when, not if it could spark Joel Embiid to try to look elsewhere. And, you know, the Knicks are a really good spot for him, right? He has a running, he would have a running mate in Jalen Brunson, Jalen Brunson and Joel Embiid, I think would work really well together. Um, but of course there are different aspects to this. Like, you know, obviously the postseason results are something that, um, is going to be a point of concern. How well c can his regular season game translate to the playoffs? How well will he mesh uh, with Jalen Brunson? And how does that knee hold up as he enters? You know, he's 30 years old now, so it's not like he's 25 with knee issues. He's now 30, so there's a lot of different things that are, are involved here. But with that being said, Justin, I wanted to hand it off to you. Tell me a little bit about what you would think uh, of a Joel Embiid acquisition and, and whether the Knicks should pursue that or not. Well, when it comes to Embiid, I I'm going to give you all some pros and some cons, okay? Obviously, the pros are pretty obvious. The guy's a top three player in the NBA, probably the second best player in the NBA, in my opinion. You know, he's been an MVP finalist the last three seasons, I believe, runner-up twice, and he just won this last season. The guy's a superstar, it's plain and simple. But, you know, the obvious cons are the playoff performance. He's not been – it's not been fantastic. You know, he's he's one of the more notorious playoff droppers in the NBA. Um this past season, he averaged 33 points in the regular season, and that was down to 23 points in the playoffs, which is, you know, I know I say only 23 points like anybody else. That's like, wow, he averaged 23 points. It's dropped. You know what I mean? It's a 10-point drop in, from his regular season number. So, you know, the, the cons are obvious. He's always been kind of a bit of a playoff dropper a little bit. I believe 2019 was like their best chance to win a title when they went all in for Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris. I think that was their best chance to win a title. But as we all know, Kawhi ripped their hearts out in game seven. They did not win the title. So, um, you know, the way I feel about Embiid, I feel like he's a superstar. He's a superstar on both sides of the ball, like you alluded to, defensive player of the year potential, you know, all that stuff. He's a He just won the scoring title. So I, I believe he's a superstar on both sides of the ball. And I do think, like, with New York, that that's a good fit. Embiid seems to feed off the, like, the spotlight. He likes to be at the center of attention, as we all know. So uh, I think that would be a good fit in New York because, you know, obviously it's the mecca. It's, it's the mecca of basketball. But, you know – the way I feel about it, I, I would be I would actually welcome an Embiid trade because well the guy's a superstar, it's that simple. And uh, you know, Jalen Brunson with a superstar like that could be just something special. That could be you could you could put yourself in title contention with that. I know Embiid has played with superstars in the past with James Harden, or you know, I'm not gonna call Ben Simmons a superstar, but he was an all-star, you know what I mean? So I know he's had good teammates in the past and it hasn't worked out. He's never gotten past the second round, but I feel like I feel like something could change if he gets a change of scenery. I feel like Philly is just – there's something wrong with Philly. I feel like there's, like, a toxic environment going on over there. They seem to all throw each other under the bus. There's never really any accountability on that team, whether it's Embiid, whether it's Harden, Doc Rivers. There's never sort of any kind of accountability that really hasn't been for a few years now. So – I feel like kind of the impatientness of, okay, when are we going to break through and get through the second round is starting to get to them. And if that core does break up and Embiid goes elsewhere, I would welcome a trade to the Knicks immediately. The guy's a superstar. Obviously, the playoff cons are a concern, and it's something to, to – it's not something to ignore. You can't just go, oh, well, well whatever. I mean, no, because he's a playoff dropper and the injury concerns as well, which I have not talked about yet. The guy's injured every year. You know, he he's missed – I believe two full seasons at the start of his career. He missed the first two seasons of his career with injuries, which is insane. And he's only played, he, he's only played 70 games. Never. I just looked right now. He's never, ever played 70 games in a season. The most he's ever played was 68 in 2022. And he played 66 this past season. So, I mean, the injury concerns are there. I believe he just got hurt in the playoffs too. He was had a knee problem or something bugging him. So, you know, all things aside though, I would still welcome a trade for Embiid to the Knicks. He's a superstar. The injury concerns 
it, you kind of have to live with it. He's a superstar. So, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. I want to hear Dylan's take on this, though. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously Embiid is one of the league's best talents, you know, as we alluded to, you know, probably a top two or three player, really, at least on my list. Some people might have him outside the top five, which to me is kind of blasphemous. But with that being said, I mean, you know, he's obviously a very, very good talent, you know, just won the MVP, scoring title, all that stuff. Yeah, the second round stuff is, you know, a concern. He's been unable to get past second round even with a, with very good teams. You know, like you said, 2019 was definitely their best chance until Kawhi's triple doink shot ruined it completely you know i mean <laughs> and beads crying reaction after that pretty much says it all you know i mean you kind of just knew it, it was going to be tough for them to get back to the position where they could make it to the conference finals and you felt like this year could they could have had a good shot but they just did not perform well enough in the bet you know i feel like personally the knicks are in a better position to make a conference finals run than philly is i honestly do i feel like the way the knicks are trying trending right now and the way that they're playing together as a unit the way they're coached and stuff I feel like they're just more positioned to you know make a run even if they weren't to get in beat this off season I still think they're in a better position to make a deep run than Philly is you know like you said Philly kind of has, has that that like weird energy going on right now you know it feels like you know there's less accountability it feels like you know players are kind of just pointing fingers at one another like oh this is why we lost this is why we lost you know instead of just taking accountability and saying you know they didn't play well enough you know what i mean so that being said i mean i think having jalen brunson and joel Embiid, i think you're gonna have one of the best pick and roll combinations really in the nba you feel like it should be the case you know with harden and Embiid, of course but you know harden's also 34 or close to it and he's you know well past his prime he's not the same player he once was if this was you know mvp harden it's a whole different conversation you're having with those with those two but you're talking about a harden that's past his prime that's not the same jalen brunson is right right about to be in his prime you know he just had the best season of his career by far he's only going to get better Brunson has been trending upwards every single season he's played he just had you know average 24 and 6 and average close to 30 points in the postseason Brunson is a playoff riser I know you mentioned that Embiid is kind of a playoff dropper I think though playing alongside a guy who rises in the playoffs will help Embiid I think it'll help Embiid become a better playoff performer playing alongside a guy like Brunson who plays very well in the playoffs and if anything only gets better you know obviously to get Embiid you might have to part away with Julius Randle but if that's the move you got to make that's the move you got to make you know right now it seems like they the Knicks right now are trying to see what they have out of Brunson and Randle to see if they can kind of maybe make a championship core out of those two if that doesn't work out if Embiid becomes available though you got to offer Randle in that case you know and as much as I'm someone who's been saying they need to keep Randle but you know when Joel Embiid is available man I mean if, if if Philly is gonna have to want to take that, and you're gonna have to get and be to do that, you gotta pull the trigger at that point. You know what I mean? If it means, especially if it means that you're gonna ship, then you gotta do it. You know what I mean? I mean, the Knicks have that like championship window within Brunson's contract. You know, Brunson has that four year contract right now. You know, you tied Josh. You're gonna eventually extend Josh Hart, so you'll have him around. You just signed Divincenzo. You have RJ. Barrett tied up for the next few years. You have these guys with you for the long haul, right? So with that being said, within those years of these guys' contracts, you want to get build a championship contender. You know, you just made the playoffs. You just made the second round. You want to take advantage of that right now while you still have this group together, build off of what, build off of, you know, this past season and build into the future seasons. And adding Embiid could really make a huge difference. I really do. I feel like if you add Embiid to the Knicks, they will instantly become a finals contender and to some that may sound ridiculous but i think we need to realize the knicks are not that far off from really becoming contenders right now so imagine you adding the guy who just won the mvp you know what i mean so i really think that it will make a huge difference i do think it's something they should look at do i think it's a move that they're going to make this offseason i don't think so i feel like this offseason the knicks are kind of just going to kind of stay where they're at right now maybe the most would just be signing as someone like a backup forward or something but, you know, as Ryan alluded to earlier, you know, if Harden, you know, once he gets out of Philly, because like you said, it's more of a matter of when, not if, you know, he's going to be out of Philly at some point. Right. So I wonder if that'll influence Embiid's decision to want to stay. You know, we saw Kyrie in Brooklyn when he got out of there. Kate, Kevin Durant was like, all right, now I want out. And then that immediately traded him away. So I wonder if a similar situation could happen with Embiid, you know, when Harden goes away, you know, uh, 
you saw those quotes a couple weeks ago when Embiid was like, I just want to win a championship. I don't care where it is, but I want to win a championship. So even he knows, like, if it's not in Philly, I just want to have a chance. And New York might be the best place for him. That's kind of just my take on it. I want to hear Ryan's opinions, though, so I'm going to hand over the mic to him. Yeah, so, you know, I, I feel like some of the playoff stuff that happens with Embiid has to do with, number one, maybe entering the playoffs banged up. Now, I know he did play through some injuries in the postseason. Now, that's not an excuse. If you're on the court and you're healthy enough to play, you're going to be graded on that performance, right? Like, that's – like, uh, you can't really say, oh, well, if you ignore the injuries because Embiid is an injury-prone guy – but I do feel like there's a little less pressure on Embiid for him to go out and grind through a regular season the way he has over the last, last couple of years. Number one, now that he doesn't have, uh, you know, no MVPs, I, I really do feel like he really wanted that MVP. And that towards the end of that season, he was, you know, dead set on, I've got a chance to win the MVP. I'm going to go out and get it. Um, and it might have cost him, you know, a little more durability in the postseason. Jalen Brunson is a playoff riser, number one. Number two, he's a guy who could be a primary scoring option. Doesn't really feel like Harden's at that stage of his career where he can be a reliable scoring option as a number one. Um, and Brunson takes a little bit of pressure off of uh, off of Joel Embiid, hypothetically speaking. Now, as Dylan alluded to, you would have to move J Julius Randle in this deal, it feels like. Um, and, and that's not just because, oh, Julius Randle's a bad player or whatever. Like, I think we are all in the agreement that Julius Randle helps the Knicks more than he hurts them. Um, and I don't really think that's worth arguing. But um, when it comes to salaries, when it comes to fit, right, where where is Julius Randle's fit on a team with Joel Embiid and Jalen Brunson, right? I, I think, you know, whether RJ Barrett gets moved or not, that's that's another thing too. Like, what would that deal look like? You're obviously going to be giving up a lot of first round picks. I imagine that they're going to try their hardest to keep at least one of Quinn and Grimes or Emmanuel quickly, just because you know you still need depth in the NBA. Um, but for the most part, when you're going into a contention window like this, you're mostly relying on you know guys who've either a drafted pretty recently or b uh, guys are, who are ring chasing and are willing to come in on vet minimums or you take a couple flyers and they hit for you. Um, but overall, like the pairing of Jalen Brunson and Joel Embiid would, in my eyes, be undoubtedly a, a, a championship contending duo. Um, you know, obviously Jalen Brunson gets significantly better in the postseason. His offensive game style is remarkable. Really, one of the biggest things the Knicks struggled with was defense and shooting. And you know, while Brunson definitely doesn't help from a defensive standpoint. He does help in the shooting standpoint. Um, and, and Bede would obviously help you a lot defensively and offensively. He helps space that court. You know, obviously one of the things the Knicks have to work around when they're spacing the court right now is that Mitchell Robinson not only can't shoot, but they can't play him on the perimeter. You know, like R we say RJ Barrett got worse as a shooter, but you're not going to leave RJ Barrett wide open at the top of the key to take a three point shot. Like you expect him to hit that shot. If you live like Mitchell Robinson's never going to be in that situation because there's never a world where he should be there. Joel Embiid's a really good shooter, not just for his position, but in general. Um, you know, now you have a situation where the other three position groups, let's say you kept Josh Hart or you kept and you kept, you know, maybe Emmanuel quickly. That's, I, I'd imagine Grimes would be the likely guy to go in that deal just because he's a couple more years away from extension than quickly is. And I don't think the Philadelphia 76ers want to be in a situation where they immediately have to extend the player they just traded for. Um, but if you have Grimes, if you have Hart as, you know, your two and your three, and then you find a power forward who could be a three and D guy, that starting lineup is lethal. That starting lineup has a lot of upside, a lot of potential, and of course, a two-star caliber guy. So I guess the question would be, you know, if you're making a Joel Embiid deal, I, I have no untouchables outside of Jalen Brunson. Is that an unreasonable take? Do you guys have anyone that you'd, not that, not that you would say isn't necessarily untouchable that, you know, that you would try your hardest to keep? Like who's on the table, off the table for the Knicks in this deal? For me, it's just Jalen Brunson as the off the deal guy. Justin, what do you got to say about that? Yeah, I agree because, I mean, when you're trading for a superstar, it, it really shouldn't – like Julius Randle shouldn't hold you back from getting Joel Embiid. You know what I mean? I love Randle, one of my favorite players. But in a scenario like that, he shouldn't be the one holding you back from getting a superstar, perennial All-NBA player, a guy who's on a Hall of Fame track, really. You know, it, that shouldn't hold you back. I don't think there's really anybody that's untouchable in that situation. I mean, I don't even know if Jalen Brunson's untouchable in that situation. But, you know, ideally you would like – to pair him with Joel Embiid. So I guess I'll say he's untouchable, but I don't really think anybody should be untouchable in that kind of situation. You're getting a guy who's, you know, perennial top five player in the NBA, top three player, maybe, you know, so in that situation, nobody on the roster should be the reason you can't get him. You know, I, mean? I know last off season when we went after Donovan Mitchell, uh, I believe RJ Barrett was kind of in the way of that. You know, it was either, do we, do they extend RJ Barrett or do they trade him for Donovan Mitchell? I know he was kind of in the, in the way of that. And I know it didn't really age well last season, but you know, in hindsight, we ended up going further than the Cavs. So it's okay. You know, it ended up being okay. But in a situation like this, where Joel Embiid, like Donovan Mitchell's not a 
top three player in the NBA. You know what I mean? Great player, but different scenario. He's not a top three player. Joel Embiid is going to be all of famer one day. You know, that nobody on the roster should be stopping you from that. You know? So that's kind of my take on it. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree also. I mean, you know, there's not really going to be any untouchables, really. Maybe Jalen Brunson will, you'll, is pretty safe because, like you said, you'd imagine they would want to pair Brunson with Embiid. You don't think they would just trade him away to get Embiid. You know, that would kind of just not make a lot of sense to me, in my opinion. So with that being said, I mean, you know, they're going to – they would pretty much have everyone on the table at that in that scenario. You know, this is a, like you said, top three player in the NBA. You're not just going to, you know, let players stop, let players that you have right now, especially with the players the Knicks have, you're not going to let them stop you from getting Embiid. If you let like RJ Barrett stop you from getting Joel Embiid, that's, that's organizational malpractice in my opinion. You can't let that happen. If a superstar like that is available and you're, you're going to let uh, like a, maybe at most all-star level ceiling player like RJ stop it from, from happening, that's that's a different discussion to have. That's like that completely changed my viewpoint on the front office, you know, because I've been pretty high on the front office this offseason. I think their approach has been pretty good. Honestly, they're not biting the bait on, you know, these older aging superstars with hefty asking prices. They're not taking the bait. You know, they're not setting themselves backwards. They're waiting until that true superstar they think fits best falls in their lap with Embiid, probably the target. And you know, I, I like that approach. And if they were to, you know, go after Embiid, but let certain assets stop them from getting him, then it would completely change my viewpoint. You know, like you said, Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, you know, guys like that should not stop you from conducting such a trade. It really should not. If the if the Sixers are saying they want, you know, our, uh, Julius Randle and a few first round picks, you know, maybe one of the other young guys we have on the roster, that should be able to get a trade done. You know, you should be able to do something like that and not let not stop it because oh we don't want to get rid of randall no this is joel Embiid. you don't mess around with this one this is an mvp level player i don't think this is exactly something you can kind of just play that whole oh we'll see we'll think no you need to like be like no we want him we want to go all in if you want to win a championship you got to go all in and sometimes that means you got to part away with an asset that kind of helped you get back to where you are but if it means the team is going to be better in the future then so be it. And Joel Embiid would make such a difference for the Knicks that I think you would have to go all in on this one. You know, and I think the fit makes mo most sense. You know, great shooter, great defender. It fits right in. I think, you know, pairing him alongside with Brunson, you're going to get a lot of great basketball out of that too. I, I just think it makes the most sense to do it. Do I think it's exactly something that they're going to do right now? Like, no, I don't. I feel like it might be another off season before we really see something come to fruition, but I definitely think it's something to monitor. I think the Knicks need to be aggressive with this. I think they need to really watch closely. I think they need to be, they need to jump right out ahead. Once, once Embiid like officially becomes available, like if the Sixers officially say that he's on, on the trade market, the Knicks need to be first in line. They need to jump right out there. They need to call right away. They need to get on the phones right away and see what they can get. They need to play this very aggressively i think i think you know i don't think they can really mess around with this i really think they need to play it aggressive that's kind of just my take i, I want to hear what you got to say about that though so mike over to you yeah so end of the day i i think the big thing here is that you know you hinted at this perfectly the knicks are waiting to make a big move and when you're in that position of hey you know we we, we are only really going to make the big move for for that guy for a guy who's clearly a better player than jalen brunson type player um, and you know, they were pat, not passive, but they were a little, they, they weren't all, all in on Donovan Mitchell ended up being the right call. And I think that's the right way to handle in the NBA. People don't understand this. You're either really good or you're not good enough or you're, you, you're either like an NBA finals contender on the brink of becoming one, or you should be terrible, right? Like there are, there's no room for purgatory in the NBA. This is not a league that rewards you for being solid and average, right? Um, and I think the Knicks are are adopting this philosophy of, hey, you know, we're we're not going to try to, you know, we're not going to invest heavy capital or heavy draft capital or uh, players into, you know, being a sixth or fifth seed every year and winning 43 to 44 games and getting knocked out in the first or second round. We're going to invest a lot of draft capital into either being the best team in the NBA or we'll hold on to our picks and we'll continue to kind of, you know, trade them away to get uh, future picks or whatever it may be. 
um, and, and rely on the in-house talent to get the job done. Uh, and I think that's a good philosophy. And at the end of the day, like when it comes to Joel Embiid, the only guy who's untouchable is Jalen Brunson. And it's not because Jalen Brunson is a better player than Joel Embiid, but because again, like if you're Joel Embiid, why would you even want to go to the Knicks if Jalen Brunson wasn't there? Like at that point, it's like, I'm just going to another Philadelphia situation. He wants to have a guy who he can run with. Obviously the, the archetype of, you know, big time center, dominant center, and a really good guard has worked very well in the NBA for a very long time. It is a model of success. So you know, ultimately, is this going to be Shaq and Kobe part two? No, but can it get you a title? Yes. And if it can get you a title, man, I mean, I I've said this to a lot of people before. If the city of New York experienced a New York Knicks title, that city's getting burned down. Like that city's coming to the ground. There's going to be billions of dollars of property damage if that were to happen. Um, but, you know, ultimately, I, I think the front office has the right vision. There's no one that should be off the board for a Joel Embiid type player. Um, and at the end of the day, this is the type of guy that, you know, this would be a guy that if you pair with Jalen Brunson, man, that would be special. He's everything this team needs. He's everything this team would like. I mean, obviously the top guy you would want on the, uh, in all of the NBA is like Nik Nikola Jokic, but the Nuggets are not in a position to be trading Jokic anytime soon. Um, end of the day, you have a chance if, if there's ever an opportunity for him to become available, which it feels like is a matter of, uh, when not if at this point, um, the Knicks should be all over it. No one's off the board to me. I love Quinn and Grimes. He's not off the board. Emmanuel quickly not off the board. Julius Randle, J RJ Barrett. Send everyone what you, you need to send to get a guy like this. Um, but with that being said, we want to know what the comment section has to say. Guys, what do you guys think about Joel Embiid? Do you guys think we're a little too optimistic on how good he is? Do you guys think he's even better than what we've said he is? Like, what is your package looking for, like for Embiid? Hell, are you even trading for Embiid, right? Like, I guess that's a conversation to some people, which I don't even think it should be. Uh, but, you know, end of the day, uh, we're open to any and all ideas. So make sure you guys tweet at us, check out our Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and of course, this YouTube page. You can check out the audio version of this podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And of course, you guys can follow our Twitter accounts or as, you know, Elon calls it X, I guess now, but we're calling it Twitter. Follow our Twitter accounts. Uh, and with that being said, we'll see you guys on the next episode of Fireside Next. Peace out, everyone. Have a great day.